Hey guys! So today I wanted to do a very requested video which is how I make my prints that I sell in my store. Um, so first I'm starting with a quick um, watercolor sketch painting that I did in my sketchbook. So first I go to my scanner and I you want to make sure that your painting is lined up with the very edges of the scan box. Um, line it up against the back wall. If your image is too big or slightly too big, um, you might want to do the scan in parts. So for mine, it was very tiny bit too big and I knew parts would be cut off, so I did it in two halves. Um, and so you want to make sure that your scan settings are set to photo and 300 dpi. Make sure it's no less or more than that. 300 is perfect. Um, while it's scanning, you might want to put pressure on it just to make sure it doesn't get blurry or anything. You can use a book if you'd like. Alright, and then scan it directly to your computer as a JPEG. The scan should come out pretty clear. Um, it might be a little bit dull at first, so we're going to put it in Photoshop and edit it. So first off, you want to open both scans. You're going to combine them into one file, so I just flip, them, flip the orientation and drag one over to the other one. When I'm trying to match the images together, I usually delete about an inch off the top image because usually around the edges the scan is blurry and just start moving it around trying to make sure that it is in the exact spot. This is why it's really important to make sure your scan is perfectly straight in the scanner. If one of your scans are rotated even a little bit, this is going to be really difficult to do. Alright, and once I think they're lined up as much as possible, I crop the image and then I combine the images together into one layer. Um, and once they're combined, I start adjusting the levels. Um, so you go to Image Adjustment and Levels. I'm using Photoshop CS6 by the way, so if it's different, um, you can probably figure out where to go. So I made the black a little bit darker and the whites brighter. Um, for this image, I want to make sure that the background is completely white, so I try to make sure that that is as white as possible without blowing out the image. And then um, I usually make it a little bit more saturated. Um, because a lot of times the scanner will dull out my image and then I go in with a white paintbrush tool and just start cleaning up the edges of my painting. Um, I just make the like corners sharper and um, a little bit of the, um, the messy parts cleaner. I don't go too far because it's obviously a watercolor painting. I'm not gonna make it look like it's a digital painting or anything. Um, and then you want to go, well, what I do with mess ups, I go in with um, the healing brush tool. And that's a really awesome tool if you haven't used it before. It pretty much just uses the area around what you want to fix to fix that part. It's not perfect, but it helps a little bit with quick fixes. And now I'm just going in with the blacks and adding a little bit more detail and fixing up anything I forgot to do in the painting. And one thing I also wanted to add was a little bit more purple to her hair. So I add another layer and I start drawing in some purple over that. I draw it in with the waviness of her hair so it looks natural. Um, and then once I'm happy with where I've placed the purple, I change the layer type to multiply and I adjust the opacity and lighten it a little bit. Um, and I also wanted to fix her eye. Sometimes when I draw, I'm not paying attention, I draw the eyes a little bit crooked. So um, I just go in and I selected it and use the warp tool to move it around a little bit. And then now I'm just cleaning up the negative space that was created by that. Um, and now I'm just using a textured brush to create the same type of watercolor texture um, and fix that area up. Here I'm just adding a little bit more color to her chest area because it got a little bit more faded there in that area. I 
I added an extra layer and I'm adding a tiny bit of shadow to her hair and her neck and everything to give it a little bit more dimension. And then my last step is to change the image size to a regular paper size. So I usually print on eight and a half by 11 paper. So I, it's important to make sure that your print is going to be the size of a paper. And you can make prints how whatever size you want, but you want to think about the customer. And um, if they're going to want to frame one of these prints, you should make it easy for them and make it like a regular size that frames come in. I usually make my prints eight and a half by 11 or five by seven. Now here's what the final edited image looks like, the print, before I go to print it. Um, so here I have my print folder and I open it up in preview on my Mac. Um, you can print from a lot of different programs. This is just what I like to use because it's easier. Um, you go to file, print, and then you want to make sure that you change your printing presets to the type of paper you're using. So it's really important to pick a good paper for your prints. Um, quality is very, very important if you're going to be selling your work. I'm going to put a lot of good paper companies in the description below. Most art prints are done on matte paper, so try not to get glossy paper for your prints. For your presets on your printing program, make sure you select matte photo paper. And for this specific print, I have a series of similar prints like this where I make them borderless and I round the corners. Um, you don't have to do this, it's just for this specific print series. Usually I would suggest leaving at least a half inch border around all sides of your print if you want it to look high quality. Make sure your border sizes are all the same size as well because um, if they're different sizes it looks unprofessional. I'm going to show you how to do a few different presets. Um, so this is another image that I print very often. So here I select matte photo paper as well and I leave a, a border all the way around. So Preview actually does a really good job of creating a really nice border for that piece. Um, for my 5x7 prints, usually Preview sizes them down a little bit. So I go in to make sure that the scale is at 100% so it will ex be exactly at 5x7 size. And I do two per page just to... Um, you know, save paper and stuff. Alright, and of course you want to load your paper. I usually just load the exact amount of prints that I'm using. Um, be careful not to touch the paper too much because your natural oils will mess with the print. And then on your printer, you're going to want to change the setting to matte photo paper or any matte type of setting that you have. Um, this will make the print a lot brighter and clearer and way more pretty and then you just wait for it to come out all right and now you should have your prints um, make sure before you post this online or anything you want to spot check your print so look very closely and make sure that there's nothing else that you want to change and then you should be okay the very last step after I've made a print is to take photos of it. So um, you want to make sure you have a nice clean area, a lot of lighting that isn't too yellow. Um, get a lot of fluorescent lighting if you have it. Um, and I like to create a little atmosphere for my prints so um, I put some decorations around it and take some photos and post that online. Alright, well thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped you out. Um, please let me know if you have any other questions. I'll probably do a little another photo editing video because you didn't get to see very much of that. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!